Today I'm going to be showing you how to do a crossband repeater modification on the Kenwood TM721A dual band transceiver. This is a great little 2 meter 70 centimeter dual bander rig. It's not documented in the user's manual and it wasn't advertised as such but this radio actually will do crossband repeating. It just involves the removal of one surface mount resistor from a circuit board. The job should take about 15 to 20 minutes or so, maybe a little longer if you're uh, not real familiar with getting into this radio or uh, soldering, that kind of thing. But uh, it's definitely worth the time and trouble, and it does a wonderful job with crossband repeating. So let's get started, and I'll show you how it's done. And we're going to start by removing two screws from one side of the radio that hold the cover in place. Turn the radio over, remove. There's two screws on the top cover near the front panel. Remove the two screws from the opposite side. Remove the two screws from the lower cover, which are also located near the front panel of the radio. Then there are two more screws holding both the top and bottom covers on. They're on the back edge of the radio. But don't remove the covers just yet. You have to be particularly careful about the speaker wires. I'll show you why in a moment. These are the two screws holding the top cover in place. Go down to the last one. get our antenna connectors out of the way. We're going to remove the bottom cover first. It's not a problem. It just slides right up. We have to wrestle a little with it. You have to be careful with the top cover because of the short speaker wiring. Carefully tip it over. And in just a moment I'll show you how you can disconnect this and just get that cover completely out of your way. Here's one of the six screws that holds the control panel subassembly in place. We're going to go ahead and remove that screw. And while we're at it here, I want to unplug the speaker connector so that we can actually just move this top cover over out of the way and not have to worry about damaging the wire. There's two more screws on each edge, so we'll remove those. And there's one more on the bottom of the radio, as you can see. I almost forgot to take it out, so let's get that last screw off of here. And you can carefully slide the entire control head assembly. There are two ribbon connectors. Be very careful. Don't yank this thing and don't disconnect those. Here you can see the memory battery and that's going to be kind of your landmark to find the resistor you need to remove. I'll show you in just a second. The part you're going to want to remove to activate the cross band repeater operation is R121, that's resistor 121. It's located near the memory battery close to the edge of the circuit board and the one in my radio is blue in color. Some references I've seen say it's green 
but it's a very small rectangular surface mount resistor and it's right next to a copper colored um, looks like a little ground plane area uh, it's kind of hard to miss it but if you find the big rectangular copper area R121 is right next to it and it'll be either blue or green take a soldering iron touch one end and it should loosen right up uh, you can just take a pair of needle nose pliers or something and hold on to it desolder the other end take it right out then you're ready to reassemble the radio and just reverse everything put it all back together and you'll be about ready to hook up and try it out as a crossband repeater radios back in the ham shack we're ready to power it up but before we do remove the microphone because you won't need it and also it will pick up background noise in the room even if you're not there so just remove the microphone power the rig up I've already programmed a VHF repeater which you see the sub band here it's received is uh, 147060 and the 442400 is a simplex frequency I've set up so I'm going to be cross band repeating between them let's adjust the squelch on the main and sub bands and we're ready to go and to activate cross band repeat simply press the F button and the ABC the auto band change button extra decimals should light up in uh, both band frequencies you see the extra decimal points there and here we are we're cross band repeating I'm using a handheld walkie talkie programmed for 442 400 in simplex with no tone and accessing our local clubs VHF repeater just a couple of words of caution here one is don't uh, program repeaters in both your main and your sub bands don't try to cross band repeat between the two repeaters because the rig will actually start trying to keep both repeaters keyed up you always want to let the tail uh, close on your repeater before you transmit to it give it time for everything to unkey uh, just don't get in a hurry and everything will work smoothly the second thing that I want to mention is that because your crossband repeating has got a pretty hefty duty cycle uh, ordinarily when you're using a transceiver you might have at best a 20 to 25 percent duty cycle over a period of time but in crossband repeat the rig is going to get pretty hot so you might want to uh, run it in low power and also keep a check and make sure you're not overheating the rig these TM 721A's were known to have a problem with some of the coils in which case the VHF side would quit transmitting um, that repair information is available online and I'll probably be posting a video on that pretty soon as well so make sure you check the website to see if uh, we've posted a video on repairing the no VHF uh, transmit problem due to defective coils another item to keep in mind is that this rig will not auto ID with Morse or digital or recorded voice call sign so therefore unlike a dedicated repeater system you need to make sure you're within distance uh, to qualify as local control for this rig uh, if you're out in your yard with a walkie-talkie or you're using this in your vehicle and you're close by and the event something gets stuck or malfunctions and you can go shut it down uh, that's fine but you don't want to be going across town and trying to use this thing and having it getting stuck unless you make another modification and remove another surface mount resistor from this radio it does have a three minute transmit timeout built into it so unless you've made that modification if this thing gets stuck in transmit for more than three minutes it will switch back to receive automatically